Hey everybody, I'm going to try something new with this video. I'm going to give kind of an overview or a look at various instances that have happened on the paintball field in which either I or my teammates have participated. The goal is to show what we did well in these situations and what we maybe didn't do so well in these situations so that down the road when similar things crop up, we and possibly other players can handle it in the best way possible. I think the best way to do this will be to grab satellite or aerial imagery of the part of the field where this actually happened and annotate it with little drawings or sketches to show the positions of players and arrows to show movement and kind of narrate the action that way. I don't know how this is going to work, but we're going to give it a try and hopefully it goes pretty well. So let's get to it. This first instance that I want to talk about occurred at March Meltdown 2011 at EMR Paintball in New Milford, Pennsylvania. This game was played in below freezing temperatures all day long with about six inches of snow on the ground. So by the end of the day when this action occurred, there were relatively few players on the field, probably less than 20 for each side. My team in this diagram is shown in blue. Our base is circled near the top left along the woods, and our line extended roughly across the, the airfield section of the field. The field also extended down into the woods, but because it was snowy and at a steep slope, there weren't any players down in that direction off to the left. The opposing team is shown in red, and they were concentrated by the dogleg in the field between the speedball field, shown as that open area just below the main building, and a part of the field called Margaritaville, which features boats and little huts, to the left of the speedball field and upwards towards the blue line. Their players were concentrated more closely to the tape line near the parking lot than were the blue players, leaving their left flank somewhat exposed. As far as I could tell, there were between 10 and 15 red players in that area when this action occurred. We decided, and in this case we being myself and two teammates, we decided to go around the left flank of the opposing group of players, just along the edge of the woods, just barely down the slope and in the woods, so as to remain unseen while we did so, with the objective of coming up behind them and hopefully breaking the stalemate a little bit. We moved past the opposing group of players and came out of the woods behind them. We settled on a spot behind them and just off to their left to wait and decide what to do next. After a very brief conference, we decided to split up left, center, and right. I was in the middle, and that our teammate on the far left would be the one that started everything off once myself and our other teammate out on the far right were in position. So this is the approximate situation immediately prior to our jump off. I should note here that we were extremely lucky there weren't more players on the field. The opposing base is actually off the screen to the bottom right, and had there been more players on the field, we certainly would have gotten taken out from behind, but because it was late in the day and the weather was terrible, no one really noticed what we were doing. So once we were all set, it was time to go. Our initial volley, if you will, was extremely successful. Each one of us eliminated two, maybe three opposing players right off the bat. So within just a few seconds, within the span of less than 10 seconds, we had changed the odds from 10 to 15 against 3 to probably between 5 and 10 against 3. However, the opposing players responded very quickly and effectively to our attack. Within a few seconds of us knocking out a number of players, kind of the second row of opposing players from us realized what was happening, turned around, and kind of counterattacked back in our direction. These counter moves actually resulted in the elimination of both of my teammates, so I was the only one on my team in this location. However, each of them took at least one or two attacking opponents with him, and that combined with my counter move and subsequent elimination of a couple of opponents, perhaps two or three, resulted at the end of all the shooting with a situation that looked like this. I could see one single opponent in a structure down closer to where my friendly lines were, my team's lines, and nobody else on the field from either team in the immediate vicinity of either of us. Me being me, I decided to charge right at him. He actually countered that move by jumping to the opposite side of that building, which resulted in this situation, the two of us being on opposite sides of the same building within about eight feet of one another. And we actually traded out in that situation, predictably enough. So at the end of this flanking move that we pulled, we ended up eliminating every opposing player in that part of the field, which was virtually every opposing player on the field at that time. However, there were so few friendly players on the field at that time, and it was so late in the game, it didn't really make all that big a difference. And this 
um, kind of marked the end of the game because there were so few players left on the field of both sides. The game kind of petered out within 20 minutes of this occurring. This final diagram shows a whole overview of the action. So you can see on the left our concealed flanking move, our positioning, and then the subsequent counter move by the opposing players, and then finally my charge down and trade out with the last remaining opponent. Things that went well here, things that we did right, were concealed movement. We nailed that. No one had any idea where we were. But we need to be more careful in the future doing things like this to make sure that there aren't opponents behind us that can really ruin your day by taking you out from behind when you think you're being all sneaky and surprising and concealed. Another thing that we did quite well was marksmanship. Even though there were only three of us, within a few seconds of the actual shooting starting, we eliminated probably three times that number. So all three of us that were involved were pretty good shots in this instance. Finally, we did a pretty good job responding to the opposing counterattack in that every opponent that participated in this little counter move against us was subsequently eliminated. However, we lost two out of three of our players in that action, which maybe we could have done better, maybe not, but we possibly could have accomplished more by turning around had more of us survived that counterattack, possibly moving on the very lightly defended opposing base. And then, of course, at the end, I was definitely uh, over-aggressive to the point of recklessness and almost certainly could have eliminated that last opponent from a distance rather than charge right up and get in close range. But that's kind of how I operate. So this concludes my first attempt at kind of an analysis type video of something that has happened on the field. I hope you enjoyed it, and I will probably do more of these in the future. Thanks for watching. See you soon.